Before I came here, I engaged my people from Zikwat and they told me if I did not tell you the truth, they would impeach me. So allow me to be as candid with you as possible. Perfect. Mr. President, my first question and one of the biggest questions my people have been asking me is why the rush? Why the rush in implementing a model that has a lot of technicalities? Why the rush? Because I am a financial engineer and you, as you have said, the issue of the, of the interest rates is determined by actuarial scientists. But... Uh, the model in itself has a lot of issues up to this moment. So even if we had all these issues coupled together, you've given a lot of sad stories of people not making it to campus, of campuses such as the Scott Bible Institute being closed. But Mr. President, we have a lot of people being affected right now. While we were at Naivasha, Mr. President, once we left, we felt like rubber stamps. comrades. For the simple reason that after that, a report was given in Naivasha. We had a summit in Naivasha around June. And uh, the report that came out is that we had agreed to the model. And our comrades were really angry with us, Mr. President. So we felt at that point like we were being set up. Like what we are telling the people is just for formalities. And we have spoken in a lot of forums, Mr. President, but I believe you have already noticed that people are not clapping much. Uh, to even the best of points, because there's a general tiresome, there, there's a general exhaustion among the people, because we are usually given a lot of promises. We will come to forums such as this, but we know that very little of it will be implemented. And Mr. President, we also know that corruption is the biggest public expenditure. And before you came into office, there were people you came into office with who had corruption scandals. But once they got into office, they, they became suddenly people of integrity. And Mr. President, in as much as we are discussing education, we know that we, the help decries of the, you, you've even told us, and it's also something I take issue with, while we were with you at State House, you told us that the debt was around 70 billion or uh, there was a time you told us 70 billion, a time came you told us uh, private universities are 51 billion, and today you said 180 billion, and as a financial engineer, I'm finding it a little bit hard to reconcile all these figures, Mr. President, so you could also state it a bit more clearly over that. But the HELB and the PS of Education has told us severally that the, that the public institutions had debts and all such kinds of stuff, but we have seen exposés on Twitter, exposés by the Auditor General, telling us that a chair somewhere costs 3.3 million, Mr. President. I, I will not rush to criticize anything of the sort, but you know that corruption is a big expenditure in this country. What is your administration doing to ensure that corruption ends in public institutions? Mr. President, we or you are using nine beaters to classify people. Once again, I'm a financial engineer, and I take keen interest in numbers. You use nine factors to classify people. Now, explain this to me. We have a parent earning 25,000 shillings, and the firstborn has made it to J-Court to do financial engineering. But this family has seven people. It has six siblings under the person who has made it to financial engineering. So, under what category does this person fall? Let's even say it's 50,000. This person lives in the CBD at a place where their life is very expensive. So under what category does this person follow? Or will we have uh, the, same, the same, same thing repeating itself of that, camp, of that girl who was looking at the people with graduation gowns? Because the first born years made it to campus and they found the new funding model and they appealed because they were placed in band five. But unfortunately, as you've heard, we have, let me confirm the numbers, we have 26,000 appeals. And also as a financial engineer, I know that not all appeals usually go through as they ought to because of the system glitches. Mr. President, kindly explain to me where this person should land because among the nine beaters, uh, the issue of the siblings and probably the dependents around that family because some of these families adopt people not because they have too much but because they have compassion on the people in the society who the government is unable or unwilling to help. Mr. President, we also have the issue of a defunct CUSO. And Mr. President, 
I love what the gentleman who has spoken in Swahili. I must first commend him because of the perfect grammar. Uh, of the issue of, we, I, I do not know if you know anyone who represents other campus students. Because, comrades, do you know anyone who represents you? Do you, do you have anyone? So, Mr. President, uh, I would like to urge you to probably constitute something that will even be recognized by the government because as students we have been crying, as student leaders we have been crying for a very long time of people who are there to just by themselves curse, Mr. President, people who are there not to represent our will, who are there not to represent our will, but they are own, people who are there for their own stomachs. And these are the people who you are striking against. Mr. President, people in this room are angry because of two people. One, it is you. I've told you I'll be impeached if I do not tell you the truth. My constituents told me that they feel, and I will put this as respectfully as possible, that you advise your advisors because of the issues. For example, let's put it, uh, let's put it, uh, let's say the issue of the new funding model. Mr. President, the only person who has explained the new funding model in the best way is you. So uh, my constituents were asking me, as in, shouldn't the people in charge of that ministry be able to put it better than the president himself? <laughs> the other person that the comrades are very angry with is in this room, seated somewhere in front, Mr. President, somebody who has been claiming to represent our interests. But, comrades, does that person represent your interests? No. Does that person represent your interests? So, Mr. President, if anyone comes to you claiming, Mr. President, <laughs> the, the comrades are telling me to tell him to walk out, but we are here for peace, Mr. President. So, I would want to put it as straight as possible and to be as brief as a cock on a hen. Mr. President, as things stand, we do not have a representative. We do not have a representative unless you enable us to uh, have some permanent office to ensure that student leaders are represented and you ensure that unlike the many government offices we have today, the government will not interfere with the affairs of the students. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, the lady there has raised an important issue. First, the questions that are here, most of them have been raised by the people around me because they've realized that you might not have a lot of time to speak. Uh, somebody named Karongo Adangwa, the senator of Kiambu County, and by the way, God willing, I will replace him, uh, raised the point, the point of all these monies being brought to one pool. The MC has a bursary, the woman rep has a bursary, probably if it was not for a very little chance, the chief might be having a bursary. Mr. President, the entire structure that represents us, and by the way, we also feel overrepresented as Kenyans, and that is one of the reasons we are demonstrating, Mr. President. We have 22 CSs, we have CASs, we have permanent secretaries, and all these people have budgets and they have salaries, but I'll put that aside, Mr. President. So these people have bursaries. And then to get a bursary, you must know somebody in the country that we live in. You. You've said that you feel for the poor. You've said that you are blamed for feeling for the poor and somebody opined that we are all politicians and we all got elected through public relations. So, Mr. President, if you really feel for the poor, kindly address that issue. You are, we have been with you in several forums and you've said that you are not afraid to buy the bullet, to take the bull by its horns. Mr. President, the MPs will disturb you. Just, just a minute. I've been sent by a lot of people. You have got my time a lot of times. So, Mr. President, uh, this MPs will bring a lot of issues. Somebody said that once you remove the CDF, people will not be vying for these positions because they go there for their stomachs. Yeah. Mr. President, kindly consider that because that will be a legacy. And actually, if you are able to do that, Mr. President, in 2027, I will personally have no issue electing you. So, Mr. President, address that issue. And finally, Mr. President, I feel like there are a lot of discrepancies in, what, uh, the, num in the numbers that you are being given. For example, you've said that uh, the, the professor uh, from Alupe who proposed the new funding model has spoken about the, peop the, the person doing teaching, the other one doing law, 
the other one doing medicine, paying the same fee. But we are student leaders here and we are students. Is that the truth? No, no, no. Under the differentiated, using, uh, differentiated unit costing, does a teacher pay the same amount as a doctor? So, Mr. President, we kindly ask that such small things be reconciled because these are the things that make people strike. Probably Naivasha the Help did a lot of good work, but as I said in the newspaper yesterday, the Daily Nation, you could go through it. I said that you might be doing a lot of good work, but your communication team is very bad.